Well, good evening, gang, and welcome to It's All About Arts. My name is Glenn Williams, and I'm your host. And to my right and to your left, of course, is the lovely Julia Purchaseppi. And we are coming to you live from our beautiful Studio B here at BNN TV. And you're more than welcome to join us if you'd like. We're at 617-708-3290. Go ahead, Julia. There's oh, the yes. number. There's the number right there. Here you go, everybody. Give, you can give us a call. Let us know what's going on in your community, actually, or in your life, please. Feel free to share with us. Well, we have taken over Studio B once again. Uh, we are so happy and proud to have live music tonight. I know, I'm excited. It's going to be I great. I love it. I love it, yeah. Have we had a live show yet with yeah. a live music show? Would you? Yeah. yeah. We did. It was this very is, exciting. This is going to be fun. It's going to be a lot of fun. But we do have a special guest with us right up off of the top of the show. We're very fortunate and happy to have great friend with us here in the studio, uh, Linda Burnett. Hello, Linda. How are you? I'm good, Glenn. Thank, Thank you, you very much for coming in. Um, in case you hadn't read in the papers, BNN's moved from uh, downtown to here on Eagleston <laughs> Square. My dear friend went to the old studio. And I, I'm glad you're here, though. It's just one huge race up Washington Street, oh, isn't it? I'm sweating, sweating a little. You're lucky the schools <laughs> weren't in today. Um, so uh, what's going on, Linda? How are you doing? Uh, have you been doing anything artfully lately besides playing the ukulele? Well, yeah, my, my terrific ukulele teacher did, <laughs> um, did teach me how to play some simple tunes in eight easy lessons. There you go. For a normal person, it's six <laughs> easy lessons. <laughs> <laughs> but for Linda, it took us eight. And I've been, I've been appreciating the arts, as always, as yes, much as course. I can. Well, you've been a great supporter of the arts. Uh, Rosnell Open Studios has always been one of your great venues that, that, you, that you like to uh, uh, support. And we've always been very, very, very grateful for all of the things that you've done. Julia, what's going on with you? You got anything exciting? I don't know you got a show coming up Thursday, don't uh -huh. you? Thursday night. Um, I mentioned it in Julia's World last week. But yep. if you uh, didn't tune in then, um, Thursday, uh, 7 p.m., doors open at 6.30, Emerson's Paramount Theater, yep. uh, Bright Family Screening Room. Uh, the film is Postcards from Tora Bora. Come check it out. Cool. That's going to be very exciting. Yeah. Um, then, so we're going we're gonna to shuffle things around just a little bit. The reason, yep. we have, we, the reason we have my good friend Linda in today is if I can get someone to grab a, grab a, a peek at this. This is the uh, a poster, and it's, and it's kind of cool. It says... Think Before You Pink Toolkit. And um, Linda's, Linda's here to talk about uh, breast cancer action, right? Yes. Can you tell us a little bit about what's going on here, Linda? I know you have an event coming up that you want to uh, want to talk a bit about. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, and, um, and I wanted to just talk a little bit first about breast cancer action, which many people in the Boston area haven't heard about. Mm -hmm. This will be actually our second event uh, in Boston. We had an event last year, but we didn't publicize it a lot. It was, it was um, not as important or big as this one that's coming up on April 3rd. Okay. Breast Cancer Action is a, um, was founded in 1990, and it's a breast cancer activist or organization, and they have three main strategic goals, mm -hmm. and, and those are um, to shift the balance of power away from the FDA and the pharmaceutical industry when it comes to treatments for breast cancer and, okay. to, and to address the needs of the people who have breast cancer rather than the companies that make money from the breast cancer industry and uh, to decrease involuntary environmental exposure to chemicals and other toxins that can increase your chances of getting breast cancer and the third is, is to educate people that it's not just genetics, but social factors such as race, uh, your economic situation, and politics, both local and national, mm -hmm. that affect the outcome of breast cancer in various people who get it. Right. Um, well, so let's talk a little bit about what uh, the Breast Cancer Action is, they're, they're, they're planning this event. It's going to be coming up on April 3rd. April 3rd. It's called Seeing Red. Seeing Red. The truth behind Now, I get, I get those pink, ribbons. I get the pink ribbon all the time. And I, yes. I know that our kids want to use, they, they actually draw them all for the whole month, a lot, you know, and all that kind of thing. But uh, Seeing Red? Seeing Red, yes. Because the, the industry that has sprung up around pink ribbons raises billions and billions of mm -hmm. dollars every year. 
and a very tiny percentage of that actually goes toward curing breast cancer, defining the causes of breast cancer, mm -hmm. and actually updating treatment for breast cancer. Women are being treated for breast cancer now much as they were 40 years ago. So this, where's the money going? Well, that's a very good question, and that's what Think Before You Pink is all about. And, and as Glenn showed us, the toolkit for Think Before You Pink uh, talks about uh, a, a major campaign that Breast Cancer Action started uh, a few years ago. And uh, it's a 30-page toolkit. You can have your own Think Before You Pink party. You can bring it to the next social engagement you go to, depending on how tolerant your friends are of you and your political causes. Um, and the three questions that we should ask ourselves before we give money to something that has a pink ribbon hanging over it is, how much money from this purchase or event actually goes to support breast cancer programs? And another question is, are there any ingredients in this product or any byproducts oh. of this event that um, increase the risk of developing breast cancer? And that includes um, ingredients in plastic like BPA, ingredients in the shampoo we use every morning, mm. like parabens and phthalates. And the third question we ask when we see a pink ribbon is, which organizations will actually get the money? So when you see a lid on a container of yogurt, a plastic container of yogurt, which has chemicals that seep into the yogurt and that can increase one's chances of getting breast cancer and other kinds of cancer, we ask that company how much of the 99 cents that we pay for that cup of yogurt or for the penny that you get for the lid actually goes to a breast cancer cause. Hmm. I would think it has to go because they're advertising it that way. Or is it going to some head of the this and that in the other's pocket? That is an incredibly good question no, and I one, think it's one that should be and asked. one that yeah. we one that we need to pursue. I mean especially it if seems if, illegal. If, yes, it does seem illegal. <laughs> and, it, and it also sounds a little bit like if 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 the process that we're doing now is 40 years old and we've been walking for all of this for many, many years, hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people walking and raising money, I'm glad there is somebody that's actually coming and asking, mm -hmm. where is that money going to? Is it pink? Right? Yes. And it, I understand it's going to be at this, at this uh, uh, Seeing Red, The Truth About Pink Ribbons, on April 3rd from 6 to 8.30. We can't, we can't sell tickets, but you can go and you can, you can, there's a telephone number here and all kinds of stuff um, to get uh, tickets for this. There's going to be a panel of experts that are going to sit and talk? Yes, uh, yes. Okay. First, may I say that Callie Crossley yep. from WGBH and WBUR has agreed to host the event. Yep. We're looking forward to that. And we're going to have a preview of the film Pink Ribbons, Inc., which was made in 2012. And it is all about the breast cancer industry and many of the things that we were just talking about, following the money. Where does that money go that you right. walk three days to raise and that all your friends dig deep into their pockets for? And um, Callie's going to open the show. We're going to have refreshments. There'll be a panel of three women. One of them is an author, El Ellen Leopold. She wrote a book a few years ago called A Darker Ribbon about the history of women and breast cancer in the 20th century. Yep. And uh, Karuna Jagger, who is the executive director of Breast Cancer Action, flying in from San Fran. And a third person is Angina Lithcott, who is a member of the BCA board and who is an advocate for health issues that uh, concern African American, um, Hispanic, and other quote unquote minorities. Right. Well, that's, this is, um, thank, I, I appreciate the outreach. Um, Linda, thank you so much. The website to go to is www.bcaction.org. Yep, and if you want to learn more about the event, it's uh, Seeing Red. <clears throat> We've priced the tickets very affordably. Yeah, can't sell them. <laughs> and or, or you can also call at 1-877-2-STOP-BC. Yes, sir. Yes. Don't call me sir. Yes, Glenn. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Williams. <laughs> oh, please. Linda and I have a history. 
we know each other. For, we've known each other for a long, long, long time. time. A long time, now, yeah. isn't it? A lot of, a lot of different hats. Well, I want to. I do want to say a couple of other things. Thank you, Linda, for coming and, and being with us today. You know what we'll do Pleasure. is is we'll make sure that we mention this. Up, up until the event, and then I think, of course, we'd like to follow up as, as well. It's going to be at Northeastern University School of Law at the Doxer. Yep, right at Doxer Rebel Hall, Station. Right you there. jump off the orange and line, there. and there it is. Yeah, you're you can, there. Even if you can't walk, you it's can walk. It's 65 4th <laughs> Street. Okay, this is, this is great. Thank you very much. And Rebecca's Cafe has been, uh, is a great stop for, the catering. for the catering. cool things. Yeah. Nice. Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I do want to take a couple of minutes. Uh, did. Um, well, you're gonna talk, we're going to talk again a little bit about the screening on Thursday. Maybe we'll catch up with that at the end. Yeah. You know, a little yeah. bit. But we do have an amazing show tonight. We, we're so very, very fortunate to, to have, uh, you know, she's, she's a young singer-songwriter, but she has arrived. And uh, uh, Haley Reardon is in the room. We're going to be, be listening to her and her uh, music. Then we're going to get to meet her in a little while after that as well. But one of the things I do have to thank, I do want to take just two seconds, quickly like I usually do, is to talk a little bit about the Boston Main Streets program. We want to thank them so much for their support here at, at BNN TV's It's All About Arts. Uh, they are responsible for uh, redeveloping business districts around the city of Boston. Now, around the world, they've been doing it so, so successfully. We're very, very fortunate for their support. Uh, and I also want to tell everybody that we are in this amazing building. It's called BNN TV. It's cable access, and it is here for you. It is a room, a place, a building where you can produce your own television programming. It's cable access. Some people say, after all, it's only cable access. But it's not only cable access. It's a great, great facility here made just for you to come in and do programming. If you have a nonprofit and you want to get you know, your word out, your mission out, here's the place to come and do it. Also, if you're just interested in producing television, being a television producer and getting your mug out there, uh, you can join as a member and you can uh, take some Final Cut Pro, uh, great uh, classes, lighting classes, sound, how to learn how to use some of these amazing cameras and, and all the things they have here to produce TV. And lo and behold, they put it out on TV. So here's the place to come and do that, www.bnntv.org. Click on Janice Williams' name. She's the person that has all the know and all the ins and outs and how to do this. And this is the place to have it be done. Also, why don't you tell us about how people can see this show coming up? You can see this show on our YouTube station. It's all about the arts one. And you can also tweet us at it's all about art. Is there an S on there? Yes. Never remember. Yes, There's there an is. S on there. Because it's, oh, look. There it is. There it we'll is. do one of these again. Ta-da. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah. So this you know, show will be up tomorrow afternoon. Yes. And you can check it out. And it's also streaming live right it's now. streaming live at www.bnntv.org. So if anyone you know out there wants to hear Haley, give them a call. Tell them to get on the website www.bnntv.org. It's funny you mentioned the arts part because I had some producers a few years ago. I wanted to do a thing where I'm gonna, I was going to go in, in the Wayback Machine, and I was going to say, this is how we really originally wanted It's All About Arts to be. Mm -hmm. And I was going to sit up here with photographs of Arthur Fiedler, B. Arthur, um, Art Linkletter. Uh, <laughs> It got squashed. Oh, I wonder why. <laughs> it got squashed. Oh. I thought that was going to be the fun. It's it was cold. right around April Fool's Day, too, so I <laughs> thought it was going to be a great idea. Hey, listen, gang, thanks for hanging in there with us. Listen, we're going to be back in just a really short, short break. Uh, we're, we're really fortunate to have Haley, in, Haley Ridden in the, in the building. Uh, we're going to get her set up and stuff, turn these cameras around. Listen, sit back and relax. You're really, really going to enjoy this. Listen, gang, you are watching BNN TV's It's All About Arts. My name is Glenn. This is Julia, our co-host, and we'll be back in just a couple of minutes. Please, don't go away. We'll be right back.
Well, welcome back, gang. Thanks an awful lot for hanging in there with us. You are watching BNN TV's It's All About Arts. And I do want to remind everybody that this show will be back on the air sometime during the week on Channel 9, but immediately tomorrow on YouTube, you're going to be able to watch this show at It's All About Arts number one is where you get a chance to see this show anytime and past shows that we've done through the years. There's a show on there from 1998 I think everybody should see. It's my old... Well, anyways, uh, it's my great pleasure and honor to, to welcome to the stage and to introduce you to, to um, um, Haley Reardon. Hello, Haley. How are Hello, you? Glenn. I'm thank so you thank you. Me. No, thank you so much for coming in and spending a little bit of time with us. Uh, you are uh, you're a young singer songwriter, but you're right where everybody wants to be now. You're really coming up and doing some great stuff. We've got a new CD that's coming out very, very soon that we're going to be showing and listening to. We're going to give her a chance now to, to play a little bit, okay? All right. Have Thank fun. You, so much. you bet. Um, my name is Haley Bearden, and this is Jesse Williams on bass, and Grant Smith on percussion, Pablo, all kinds of stuff. Um, and we're so 
excited to be here on St. Patrick's Day. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Thank you, Glenn, for having us. I know, I, we're not wearing green. I had a green jacket, but I took it off. So I tried today. Um, this song is, is called Nervous. I'm old boy to his cards so I've never wanted love I only want the stars And some call it forgets I guess they never noticed That I can't move I found familiar feet And everything stays There's one. There's one cover on that um, that EP that, or that album EP. I don't know piece of record thing that um, that Glenn showed, and and this is the one the one covers. This is a little ditty from way back before my day, way back before all of our days. <laughs> yes, add them all up, and then you might be in the year where this was written. All right.
tell you a little story about it, if that's okay. Um, we're going to end on one here. I'm, I'm 17, so this story gets a little more embarrassing to tell all the time because I feel like I stand on stage and talk about being an 8th grader all the time, but um, I'm in 11th grade now, but I'm going to take you back to, um, to the end of my 8th grade year, and we were assigned this project where we were asked to draw ourselves exactly as we saw ourselves. And then on the inside of our bodies, we were asked to put adjectives to explain how we view ourselves. And on the outside, we were asked to put adjectives to explain how we think the other people view us. And then um, we got paired up with other kids in the room, and we had to talk about why we drew and wrote what we did. And I got paired up with this boy that I didn't really know very well. And I didn't know that he could draw, but he was an unbelievable artist, and he had drawn his body all in black and white. And then coming up out of his head was this explosion of thoughts and symbols and colors and ideas. And he put all of his adjectives about himself up in this thought bubble instead of in his body like we were assigned. And I sat with him and he talked to me about how he saw himself as unsocietal and how he had one hand open and one class tight to explain the things that he was open to and the things that he wasn't. And then on the inside of his body, he only put one word and it just said human as if that was all he really knew and that was all that really mattered. And um, I went home that day and I could not stop thinking about what an artist this kid was and the fact that I had sat in class with him for eight whole years and had no idea about this explosion of light and color and character inside of him. Um, and since then, it's become my thing to look for that artist in everyone and kind of change my definition of an artist from somebody who takes a paintbrush to the page to that explosive, creative, unique part of everybody. And so I thought it tied in with all about the arts. We're here celebrating art. So we'll, this is called Where the Artists Go. But we'll play it in tune, hopefully. But thank you so much, Glenn, for having me. Thank you, Kurt, for getting me here. Thank you, Julia. Thank you, all you guys making this happen. All right, so this is Where the Artists Go. Just your thunderous mind Always chasing, searching, always something new to find And someday the walls of this town are gonna cave in And oh, this explosion inside you is gonna burst through your skin Bye. 
Well, welcome back, gang. Thanks an awful lot for hanging in. Wasn't that fabulous? Wasn't that beautiful? I mean, it's, it's, it's great, great stuff. And you're going to meet her in just a couple of minutes. But first, first, we got, uh, we're going to be turning it over to our great co-host, Julia Perciuseppe. And here it comes, folks. It's time for Julia's World. Hey guys, welcome to Julia's World. I just have a couple of things coming up this weekend that I don't want you to miss. Uh, and then we'll get to talking to um, Haley and seeing uh, what she's been up to. Um, the first thing is Maven. I don't know if you guys know what that is. I did not. It's a music production and DJ school in Boston, which is pretty cool. Um, this Friday at 6 p.m., they're having a social media workshop for bands, DJs, and artists. And we've been talking a lot about that uh, recently with some of the guests. Um, so if you need help in that department, uh, sign up. Um, it's run by Clay Fernald, um, and it covers the basics. Um, and it'll get into some of the more complicated um, aspects of social media to help get your band out there. Or if you're an artist, get your art out there. Or if you're a singer, songwriter, get your songs out there. Um, second, uh, at the MFA, there's the, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing this right, the Nauruz, Nauruz uh, 2014, the Persian New Year Festival. They celebrate kind of the, com the, the new spring, the coming of spring. Um, and that's on this Saturday um, from 10 to 4.45. And there will be performances um, and art making activities and food. Um, so that's a fun family activity for this weekend, very cultural. Um, and last uh, is um, the Puppet Showplace Slam. Uh, at the Puppets Showcase Theater. I, don't, I doubt many of you think of puppets when you think of art, um, but it is an art form, making puppets and doing puppetry. Um, so that is this Saturday at 8 p.m. Uh, at the Showcase Theater. It's called Puppets Around the World. Um, this is grown-up entertainment, so don't bring the kids. Um, it's 8 p.m., not, not too grown-up, but it's not appropriate for kids. Um, and that's all I have, so let's go check out uh, what Haley has for us. Thank you very much, Julia. <laughs> that was inspiring uh, towards the end there. <laughs> I thought that was pretty cool. Listen, gang, you've already met her, uh, but now it's, uh, it's my great pleasure and, and privilege to uh, have, a, have a quick chat with, with Haley Ridden. Hello, Haley. How are you? Hello. That Thank was you great. For me. Thank no, you. Thanks very much for being part of our show tonight. Yes. Uh, that was very, very beautiful. I, I want to read something here. It says. Uh, someday the walls of this town are going to cave in and all oh, this explosion inside you is going to burst through your skin. Yes. Is that you? Yes. Is that from one of your songs? Yeah, that was that artist one I played. That's beautiful. You know, I, you know I'm an art teacher. All right. Well, yes. then you get it. I do get it. I get it a whole bunch. And yeah. I'm going to be playing that song for my kids. Um, how long have you been doing this? Um, about five years now. When did you start writing? I mean, when did you think that, you know, when did writing become part of what you do? It's funny. I picked up a guitar when I was 11 um, and was just, like, bored and at home over the summer and mm. picked up a guitar. And the first thing for me felt like to start writing. And looking back, it's sort of weird as to why I immediately wanted to write songs and knew nothing about writing songs. But, um, but writing has always been, you know, the driving force between this whole music yeah. thing for me. So. Now, um, now, performing is an entirely different thing. I mean, sitting at home in your room and writing some tunes and, and, and putting them to poems and what have you is, mm -hmm. is, is an entirely different thing to, than the promoting yourself as an artist and the traveling artist. You've been everywhere. <laughs> yeah, well, me and my dad. <laughs> you and your dad. <laughs> yeah. It's great to have that kind of support. Was your father a musician, too? No, no, my dad sells insurance. <laughs> <laughs> Well, he's selling you pretty well right now, too. Uh, this album is very, very exciting. You called it an EP. This is an album, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, okay, thank you. Uh, yeah, an EP it's has determined. a couple of songs. Okay. We've, we've nailed it down. It is an album. Thank Where can you. people get this? They can get it online, right? Yeah, all iTunes, the... iTunes, all the regular things. Yeah, wherever you get your stuff online, um, it's there. Uh, what was the recording uh, process like for you? Was this your, this was your first experience in the studio? No, no, this is, um, I made a couple EPs when I was younger, um, and then I made my first full, I made a record with Lauren Entrist, who also produced this, he's mm -hmm. here, hanging out back there, um, but, but we made our first record together, and then we did this one, so that was kind of, I'd say, like, my second, um, okay. but, uh, 
but yeah, the, the process was wonderful. It, it's really cool to be surrounded by Now, the cats that you were playing with today, are they, they your regular band to gig around with? Um, well, they were both on this record, okay. so, um, so, yeah, so I'll they came this in. Up like this. Oh, Mr. Kurt likes it when I do this. Oh, Mr. Kurt. <laughs> yes. Um, so, yes. Uh, do you got any gigs coming up? You, did, you just did a residency at Passim's over in Cambridge, didn't yes. you? How long was that? Um, I was there one Saturday of every month for like four months, three or four months, and then we had, it was leading up to the release show for this, yeah. which was in January. Um, there's no kind of, there's no other kind of experience than that to have a regular gig like that. No, you're uh, so special. And I understand that the CD release party went over the top. <laughs> it was very fun. It was very fun. It was, I, it was on a Thursday night and I kept saying that it was the most fun I will ever have on a school night. It was so <laughs> fun. <laughs> Since you brought it up, you're still in school. Yes. Where do you go to school? Thank you for not like going straight to that, by the way. But, um, but I let you yeah, open the door. I'm not going to do that for you. <laughs> um, I go to Marblehead High School. Marblehead. I live in Marblehead, yeah. That's so. great. Uh, is, is, have you gotten some musical experience from the high school experience as well? I mean, are you studying music there? A little bit. I'm, I sing in the choir, and I'm very busy, so I'm not mm -hmm. super involved in... We have a great music program, but I um, can't be there after school and stuff, you know, so... Yeah. Um, but I'm in the choir. That's so. good. Well, I hope so. You should be <laughs> singing in the choir. What influences you as a songwriter? Uh, we're going to get back, back to that kind of aspect of the whole thing. As a songwriter, um, do you, uh, is it something you just fiddle around with? You sit and you kind of play until something comes out? Or, or are you disciplined enough to be able to say, okay, I'm done with this, I'm done with that. I have three hours to myself. I'm going to go finish those two songs that I started. It depends. I'm working. I wish I could be, I wish I could rely on myself to sit down and, you know, make it work. But um, it's still kind of a mystical thing to me. Um, <laughs> it's a mystical thing to a lot yeah, of us. Yeah, Don't yeah. worry about it. <laughs> yeah, so I'm still kind of figuring out what my process is. I get asked that question and I kind of don't know. I feel like my songwriting thing knows more than I do. But, um, but it's different every time. Mm -hmm. Sometimes They it's, seem very personal. Yes, well, yes, that's, yeah. that is how, how have you How have you combated that whole, I, I mean, I'm not talking to you as a new musician. I'm I ask all my musicians, mm -hmm. this, their friends that come on like this, is, is writing that song and getting that song out there, it's so personal and so part of you. Is, is the sharing of yourself, have you gotten past that, are they going to like it thing? Uh, Since it's so personal? Yeah, yeah, sort of. I think I started songwriting so young that, kind of the first voice I found in any aspect of my life was mm -hmm. in songs. So it's really the most comfortable. I, you know, I'd be way more nervous to s tell you something face to face than I would through a song. So um, that's- It's an avenue for you. Yeah, it's the most comfortable way I know how to express that's myself. That's great. So. You've played with some pretty serious people too. Pretty serious. Yeah. <laughs> I, <clears throat> I mean, who have you, you've opened for a couple of pretty uh, uh, relevant people. Who have you played with? I have, oh, who have I played with? Who are you referring to? Tom um, Rush? Tom, oh yeah, I have. How about Tom Rush? Yes, 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 <laughs> yes. I adore Tom Rush. He is so awesome. And um, and yeah, I got to do a What was that experience like? It was really cool. He was playing at Passim, and he had me come up and do a little bit in his in his set there. And um, he actually, my record label, they make documentary films too, and they made a documentary film about him that just came out that's really wonderful. So. Um, called No Regrets, but yeah. But do, I we, do, you, do you have any gigs coming up? Um, you know what? You're going to have to go to HaleyReardon.com because I go to HaleyReardon.com to find out when my gigs are. Um, I wish yeah, I you're had. Playing, you're playing that often. Is it really is it getting to be a little crazy? Yeah, yeah, it is crazy. I play in schools a lot too, so it's a lot. Um, I'm in like kind of... I mean, you've traveled. You've, you've been... You did a bit one hit in Alaska. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and you've been here and you're there, and, and, and the travel thing, it doesn't, is it still pretty exciting? Yeah. Are you getting your homework done? Uh, it's a school teacher talking. I'm sorry. I, should, I know. I it's, it gets harder all the time, really, but um, I'm getting most of it done. That's good. Most okay, as it. long as you're trying. I'm trying. I think I that's the important thing. Yes. Is this what you want to do? Yeah, I think so. I think so. That's good. Yeah. It's great. Well, congratulations, and, and thank you so much. Uh, I want to really push this. I'm going to help. We're going to get this on our, on, on, on our websites so people can click on it and go right to uh, the iTunes is the best place, do you think, or do you want them to go to your website? Yeah, uh, they could go to my website, but wherever, I mean, iTunes you is You get fine. all of it if they go yeah, to your people. website. <laughs> there you go. Sure, go to <laughs> so my website. I think you should go to your okay. website. <laughs> uh, and is, is there places where fans can, can hook up with you on, on, like, Facebook and stuff like that? Yes, yes, I am on all those, all, all those, those social, social media, media things. things. Yeah, yeah, and 
my website will connect you to any of those. How are you separating the music from the whole that whole publicity pushing your face and name around? Are you, are you able? To, is somebody else helping you with that, or are you kind of just you're not staying up late at night answering Facebook requests? Are you? Um, you know, so, some of it I some of it I am, and some of it I'm not. There are I there are some people helping out with this and with the kind of like PR side of it. But uh, I play in schools a lot, so one of my favorite things is to get to connect with. Um, the kids. We, I do a whole program about finding your voice and whatever that means for you and expression and empowerment. So that actually means How is that going, me. the finding your voice part? It's wonderful. The, that it's the most Well, that whole thing, thing about, about find, discovering that student that you didn't realize, you don't, we're all artists. We exactly. Just, you know, uh, yeah. some of us haven't been discovered, but you know, it, it's, a, it's a great story that you told and I'm really happy that you did. A lot of my kids watch this show. Not for me, but for the people that are on it. <laughs> and uh, uh, I thank you very much for being here. This has been a great pleasure for us and an honor. Thank Thanks an awful so lot much. for coming in. Please come back again. I will. You know, there's an open open door policy here. Just <laughs> let us know when you're coming. Okay. <laughs> we did take over the studio quite a bit. Haley, thank, thank you, you so Glenn. much thank for being Thank you so here. much. Listen, gang, we're going to take a real fast, quick break, and we'll be back in just one quick minute. Do not go away. Thank you. Thank you. That was great. Thank you, That Glenn. was really awesome. Yeah. There comes a time when everybody needs to be with someone. Well, now's the time. Well, thank you, gang, for being back with us. And we're back with Julia Perciuseppi. Julia, that was a great Julia's World. Thank you. Sure. Wasn't she great? Oh, my gosh. Sweetheart, huh? So cute. Yeah. That was, uh, that was, she's going places with that. Uh, when I was 17, I was, like, <laughs> hiding behind my mom's skirt still. Like, <laughs> I can't yeah. even believe that yeah. she is doing that. Yeah, it's she's, amazing. She's got the personality and she's got the yeah. support. And I think that's an important part of, at this point. And she has know. the right perspectives, yeah. too. Like, I really like what she has to say. Right, right, right. Um, and that whole Find Your Voice I program it. that, it's, it. that she's doing sounds like it's really, it's be great, yeah. really great. Well, you know what we're going to do is we're going to wrap up pretty quickly because we've got to put this studio yep. back for the Greek program. <laughs> Uh, thank you very much for being accommodating today. I know it was a kind of a break of Russia. Russia it was this exciting. Night. It was thrilling. Listen, staff here, thank you very much. You guys did a great job. It's awesome work. You guys love doing the live music. David sometimes creatures, you know, cringes a little bit, but we love David, and thank you for everything that he does. Listen, gang, get out there and do something awful for yourself, please. And like we like to say, oh, well, happy St. Patrick's Day. Happy St. Patrick's Day. I want my green. I know, I didn't. Oh, have a great, listen. Get out there and do something awful. There he is. Uh, <laughs> listen, like we like to say every week, please keep in the forefront of your minds. Our mothers, fathers, sons and daughters, aunts and uncles, nieces and nephews in foreign soil, please do something awful. Then they'll love it. You'll love it. We'll dig in next time. Okay, guys? Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.